Hello and welcome to this short video from the Northern Ireland Judicial Appointments Commission explaining how to prepare for the assessment and selection process. We recognise that many potential applicants for judicial office will rarely, if ever, have applied for any other role in a similar manner and that understanding the process can be a particularly challenging hurdle to overcome. We hope that this short video can provide you with the information you need to make the process easier to navigate. NIJAC's assessment and selection process is designed to enable selection committees to select people for judicial office on the basis of merit, having considered all the evidence they have provided against the person's specification. The most important step you can make before entering this process is to fully understand the judicial office you are applying for. NIJAC provides a number of opportunities to learn about the role through the job description and nature of the role documents. There is usually also the opportunity to speak with a sitting judicial office holder through a confidential point of contact provided for each scheme. In addition, those eligible can apply to the judicial shadowing scheme, which provides an opportunity to shadow a judicial office holder to gain greater insight into their role. The most common theme that successful applicants identify as being key to their success is that they devoted a significant amount of time and effort into preparing for it. It is key to learn about the role, read the supporting documentation and take the opportunities provided to gain insight into the role you are applying for. NIJAC recognises that busy people can find it difficult to make the necessary time over the short period open to applications. For this reason, we notify potential applicants of forthcoming opportunities as far as possible in advance to maximise preparation time. NIJAC employs a number of methods throughout the assessment and selection process. These methods are designed to assess the relevant criteria and elements of the person's specification. Selection committees can gauge the skills and attributes and behaviours and effectiveness of applicants on the basis of their previous actions and achievements. They can also do this through assessments which place applicants in scenarios relevant to the role applied for and which require applicants to demonstrate the required criteria in response. So, what will these assessment methods look like? Broadly speaking, NIJAC use common assessment methods which have been tried and tested over many years of recruitment experience. The application form gives you the opportunity to showcase your suitability. This includes your qualifications, employment history and other experience. It is usual to also provide a self-assessment against the requirements of the person's specification. In a typical recruitment scheme, NIJAC will use your self-assessment as the means of determining a short list of applicants, who will then proceed to the next stage of assessment. At shortlisting, only your self-assessment will be considered by the selection committee. They are not told your identity or career history. Therefore, what you share in the form has a pivotal impact on the prospects of your application. It is important to provide evidence which addresses the requirements of the person's specification, as laid out in the applicant information booklet, and that you do so through the use of examples. This is critical. The examples chosen should clearly indicate what you did and be focused on the skills, attributes, behaviour or aspect of effectiveness that you are trying to demonstrate. You should focus on your own actions, breaking the example down so as to demonstrate what you did and the impact of your actions. A statement regarding your general role is not sufficient as an example. Having held a role does not evidence how well you delivered in it. Neither is it effective to list a series of examples without detailing what you actually did in each of them. Be mindful as to the examples you choose and how you describe them. You should assume that the selection committee have no direct experience of the context of your work. The use of acronyms should be avoided. Evidence should be limited to facts about the situation, the task you faced, the actions taken 
and the result. Communicate in a clear and succinct manner. Great care should be taken to ensure accuracy in spelling and grammar, as that can impact on the ability of the selection committee to interpret the evidence you provide and can have a direct bearing upon their assessment of how effectively you communicate. An effective way of gaining objective insight into your application form is getting someone else, partner, friend or colleague, to feed back on it before submission. NIJAC recognises that it is challenging to summarise your capabilities in this manner, but there are some techniques which can make it easier. NIJAC suggests using the STAR tool to maximise the impact of written submissions. The STAR approach, situation, task, action and result, is a useful tool to assist you in setting out your examples. You are not awarded marks for using the STAR tool, but its use does make it easier for the selection committee to understand the challenge you faced and how you acted in response to it. Using the STAR tool, you should aim to quickly set out the situation you were in and the task you were faced with. You should then proceed to deal with the actions which you took to achieve the desired outcome and finally, to briefly confirm the result of your actions. Further guidance on the STAR tool can be found on the NIJAC website, in the Supporting Scheme documentation and in the Judicial Profile Guide. NIJAC will use tests as an interim or final shortlisting method and they are usually delivered using an online platform. Tests for legal schemes will be set in the context of the role. The tests ask you to respond to the types of questions required in the role applied for. Shortlisting tests developed for non-legal schemes may use scenarios similar to the work required in the role, or a critical thinking test. Typically, these tests will be in multiple choice format. However, essay type response, or a mixture of the two, may also occur. Tests are strictly timed designed by people with expertise in and knowledge of the role and are subject to a process of validation by others with similar expertise and knowledge. Previous tests are available to view on the NIJAC website. Good preparation would include reading those tests and considering how you would have responded. The most common assessment method used by NIJAC is the interview. The selection committee are the interview panel and normally consist of three members, including a lay commissioner and a co-opted member. Interview questions will assess some or all of the criteria and elements set out in the person specification. Preparation for interviews can be challenging and it is difficult to predict the questions which will be asked. What you can do is prepare for a number of eventualities. Examples you have provided in the self-assessment section of the application form may be questioned further at interview. Therefore, it is important to be prepared to expand on the information you have provided. Interview questions may also examine how you deal with specific challenges should you be appointed. Some questions may combine one or more areas of the person's specification. You may also be asked to relate an example from your own experience which evidences how you meet any given criteria. Gathering knowledge of the role and how it is developing both procedurally and legally may also help identify some topics which you should read into or consider in advance of the interviews. Reviewing your form and being prepared to speak in depth about any of your chosen examples is important, as is understanding the nature of the role you are applying for and being able to speak to why you are ready for the demands of that role. As with the written self-assessment, it can be useful to get a third party to ask you some questions to get used to speaking to your own work and how you would respond to a given scenario or question. Adopting the STAR tool approach can also be helpful in responding to questions about what you have done in the past. It helps the selection committee understand the task you were faced with and what actions you took to achieve the result. A situational judgment exercise, or SJE, is an examination of your ability to analyse information, 
understand the factors affecting the decision and to make decisions or to form an opinion upon it. You should also be prepared for the SGE to form the basis for other questions at interview. The SGE will typically be aimed at assessing your skills and attributes, for example, your knowledge and expertise, intellectual capacity and ability to exercise judgment. Preparation can be aided by the example exercises on the NIJAC website. You should also seek out decisions made by the relevant court or tribunal, higher courts and tribunals, or relevant decisions in other jurisdictions. A role play may be used when recruiting for salaried judiciary. Role plays enable the selection committee to observe you dealing with the issues faced within the role. It is difficult to replicate the environment in preparation, but you can take the opportunity where possible to observe the actual court or tribunal in action and prepare for the eventualities which can occur. You will undertake the role of the judicial office holder and actors will undertake other roles, for example, parties to a case or their representatives. The selection committee will be present during the role play, observing your skills and attributes, your behaviours and how effective you are at dealing with the challenges presented. The selection committee may also opt to undertake a debrief with you at the conclusion of the role play to better understand your decisions and behaviours. There is an example of role play on the NIJAC website and we recommend that you view it. Intray exercises aim to replicate the procedural aspects of a role and so awareness of the nature of the role is important to aid preparation. They typically arise in roles where the office holder is faced with multiple decisions on differing matters in short periods of time. For example, in the magistrate's courts, or roles where management of various challenges is paramount, such as tribunal presidents. They reflect the exact nature of the role and the nature of the challenges frequently dealt with. For example, you may be given 30 minutes to read and prioritise different letters, emails or applications, and then be asked at interview how you would deal with each of them. It can be a useful exercise for you to consider how you deal with the list of matters arising in your own role and to consider what kind of challenges you are likely to be faced with in the role applied for. Reflecting on this can be the best type of preparation in this instance. Presentations are typically used in schemes where the office holder has a leadership or training role. A presentation may also be used in schemes where a high level of legal knowledge is required to discern certain matters affecting the court or tribunal or where general developments in the law affect the court or tribunal. You may be given a topic to present on and a short time to prepare the presentation immediately in advance of the interview, or you may be advised of the topic some days in advance and asked to present on the day of assessment. Take time to consider the court or tribunal environment, the developing law within its jurisdiction or other factors which may have a bearing upon it and think through how you may deal with the challenges arising. As with your written application form, it may be a worthwhile rehearsing a draft presentation to a partner, friend or colleague. I finish with some general advice on how to prepare for NIJAC's assessment and selection process. It is very important that you read the applicant information booklet to see how the selection committee intend to conduct the assessment. There will be important information to guide you on the assessment methods being adopted and where and when they will take place. This will help you to prepare and plan for the assessment. Be aware for the potential for the selection committee to need to change the process and keep an eye out for all communications from NIJAC. It is rare for a process to change but unexpectedly high applicant numbers or illness can cause the need to adapt the process. It is very important to refer to NIJAC's guidance documents. They will give you advice on what to do and helpful techniques, for example, using the STAR tool as a structure for your written self-assessment and when responding to questions at interview. Read yourself into the role you are applying for thoroughly. The selection committee are assessing your suitability for the role and will be looking for you to clearly demonstrate that you understand the demands of the role and how you will meet those demands. Remember, 
that most exercises will be strictly timed and your preparation should take that into account. Please also remember that applying for judicial office is a competitive process and not everyone will succeed on every occasion. We encourage applicants to use the opportunity to access feedback to understand what they can improve in future applications and to see what areas they performed well in. If you require a reasonable adjustment in respect of the assessment process, you can confirm the details of this in the application form. If you require an adjustment in relation to the application form, then please contact NIJAC directly as early as possible so that we can facilitate you with an appropriate adjustment. For further information on the judicial profile and person specification and how it affects assessment and selection for judicial office in Northern Ireland, please visit the NIJAC website at www.nijac.gov.uk. Thank you for watching. Thank you.